Gaiman Podcast. And welcome to episode 62 of the Father Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Gibbs, the Father Gamer. With us today, we have... Ransom. Also na- known as... Yarp. Yarp. Yarp, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and to my virtual left and my actual left, I have... Katie. Katie, also yes. Also known as... Yarp. I don't know. <laughs> what, did I say? what did I say last time? Like, Katie the... Killa. Destroyer, Killa. Or Katie, this K- fucking Katie Darth Katie or something. So, so okay, we we discussed. Uh, I think it was last week. We were trying to figure out because we have that art thing that we're trying to get somebody to do art of all of us with all of our favorite Pokemon. Oh, Officially, on. what is YouTube's oh, no. use favorite Pokemon? You didn't. Pro- you didn't like tell me. I know. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, you dropped on. I, I, I asked you on on, yeah, on, on Insta message, and I was it. like, "This is not red wire, blue wire moment here." <laughs> okay, this is a fucking Pokemon. Which is your favorite uh, Pokemon? I'm just gonna go with. <laughs> wow. This is a really really hard question to answer. This we've is got, a, what, like, twenty years. Do you know how of, many Pokemon there are? It's there's been a lot twenty of them. years that we've oh, been okay, experiencing okay. Pokemon. What's your favorite starter? Okay, what's my favorite starter? Yeah. Uh, I'd have to say I usually pick. Oh, I gotta look at my phone. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Um, you know what? We'll come back to the question while we go through this stuff. Think about it as okay, as well. as we go through. <laughs> so I'll go let you go ahead and you know what? You'd figure it out while we go into what's in your system. What's in your system? So, um, Ransom, yes. while you're thinking of a Pokemon, <laughs> we have been playing, you, Kyle, and I played a lot of the Division Beta. Yes, an amazing beta. So, you say amazing. What was your favorite parts? Um, there's just so many. Oh, yeah. really? You're just <laughs> Captain Descriptive today. Yeah, can't I mean, figure out Pokemon, can't. I really like how loot works, and also the PvP in yeah. the game. It's really interesting how you have to collect your loot, and then you need to make it to like these extraction points. Yeah, the, the game is set up, it's really weird, but really kind of cool, where you have the, 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 the story mode, essentially, area. Yeah. And you do all the missions, and you're trying to level up um, your base, essentially, that yeah. you've been sent to, like, the, the medical wing, the engineering wing, and all that kind of stuff, which upgrades certain stuff for your character. See, okay, I see, I never, like, knew what those things upgraded. Yeah, they, they eventually will let you, like, actually do more customization okay, for the weapons. Since the beta, they were just like, oh, yeah, they, it, it. <laughs> they didn't even really let you, like, decide how you looked very much. I mean, there was a bunch of us running around looking... Pretty much the same. Yeah. <laughs> the only variable were uh, wearable clothes that you find that and didn't really... whether or not you had a beard. Yeah, whether or not you had a beard. So you were a white guy with a beard, without a beard, Asian guy with a beard, beard, without with a beard. beard. Yeah, it was pretty so much how it went. Yeah. <laughs> so so you have that that area, then you hit the the dark zone, dark sector, yeah. I forgot what it was exactly yeah, it was called. Yeah, I think it was called this dark zone. And, and as soon as you go into there, it's PvP. At that point, okay. so so you can go around. There's actually randoms and random missions and stuff like that, and they're worth a lot more. And in that area, the loot that you collect oh, is so much better. It's so much better. Yeah, you're like getting blue loot and like like okay. What's, even, what's the breakdown? Because every game is fucking different. It's pretty. Color. It's pretty it's much pretty it, like it's pretty like typical De- destiny almost. Really? Yeah. It's yeah. Like blue is like the best, and there. I don't know. Is there a purple? Orange? There's a purple. Oh, there is a purple. Yeah, purple. Okay. I think purple is actually the best, but because I ended up getting a purple at the very end. Yeah, and then, the then, only thing I got was blue. Then I realized it didn't really matter because it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So Whoa. so Whoa, we got a so it happens when you're in the PvP area. Um, you, especially if you're in a group, it's it's could actually even be crazier. If one of your guys shoots another player, 
it activates your team as being rogue agents. Yeah, so everyone's on the same team, but if you shoot someone, then you become rogue. Yeah, so like Kyle shot someone, and next thing I know, there was like yeah, 16 have, people running after me. Yeah, and we have red skulls <laughs> above our heads or whatever. Yeah, and, and you're worth a lot more if they kill you at that point. So you have a-holes that will run around and shoot near you. To try and provoke you to shoot at them. So yeah. So that they're like, oh, now you're rogue, and I can kill you and steal your loot. And yeah. And so so as you get loot, these little bags appear on your on your Yellow, backpack, like, little bag, yeah, little, little, little things. satchel. And you have to go to a, uh, essentially a, a landing zone for a helicopter. You have to call the helicopter with a, with a, with a flare gun. And you have to put your loot on a rope that drops down. Meanwhile, fending off uh, real people, fake people, <laughs> like everything as your loot gets taken away. So you have like, what is it, probably about a minute and a half that you're probably waiting to see, hopefully, that amazing orange or purple weapon that you co you collected got taken away. So, oh. And if it doesn't, they can actually collect the loot. Oh, wow. So, so it's like, it's pretty intense, like they're trying... Yeah, there's oh, a lot yeah. of tactical... There's a lot of... Because, like... Very strategic, when, I guess. When you're, yeah. <clears throat> when you're putting the loot on the little helicopter hook thing, your whole team can't do it, or else, like, people are just going to mow you down and take your loot and then put it on. And so, like, you have to do it one at a time, and while you're... All of the rest of your team is, like, looking at these people, like, going, Hey, don't try anything, or I'm going to shoot at you. And, and you all... And, you, and, and each of you, actually, uh, you can develop different... Uh, Powers, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. Like uh, one can be more medic based, one can be more engineering based. Yeah, there's definitely based. there's like, like spec trees. As in, like class mm -hmm. specs and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Okay. So like Kyle and I were medics running around, and uh, I was the. You the, had a shield that was yeah. useless. I had a shield that was at because like, like or your handgun. They aren't. It isn't really that good compared to your other weapons. And unless, unless you, you level it up, up, yeah. Unless you yeah leveled up like so unless. So when you have your shield out, you have this, like, handgun, and unless you have, like, a revolver, you're not really doing a lot. The revolver shoots slowly. I would just rather have an assault rifle. Yeah, yeah. Or, or a sniper rifle. Or a sniper rifle. Because sniper rifles rule. <laughs> they, they are really good. So we played that. Uh, you played a little bit of Nom Nom Galaxy. <clears throat> Nom Nom Galaxy, yeah. I know somebody else here that played the <laughs> hell out of it. Well, like, Ransom told us about it. Yeah. Last time, mm -hmm. or the time before that. Well, he does get, he is paid... Uh, by the company that well, makes Well, I should that. be paid by the company yeah. because <laughs> Ransom told me about it and then I played like fucking 30 hours of it. <laughs> most of which I played on PS4 and then Austin decided he wanted to get back into Bloodborne which was obviously on PS4. Yeah. So, I bought it on PC. Oh, wow. You really... <laughs> and I added like and an, like I played like at least 10 hours on my on Steam. Like, replaying what I've already fucking played on PS4, unlocking the same shit, trying to get to the same so place. So how many hours did you, like, replay of the game? Nine. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. I'm, just how much did I you played. really like that game? And I still haven't gotten to the same place in on PC that I was on oh, PS4. Man. But it's really good. I love those strategy-based games like that. Like, it's... You have to really utilize the resources around you. Right. Yeah, it's I like trying people. really hard to automate the system, like automate everything as much as I can. Oh, or you just you're creating the soup, going on a, like I don't know. Do they have conveyor belts? Or they do, like... like, but you have to unlock. There's like little pieces of technology you have to unlock, but they give you a taste of the technology in one of the tutorial levels. Oh, okay. And then ah, and then when you get there to you go. what you could have, and then and <laughs> you then you go. the veins clearing. Yeah, <laughs> and then. Well, and, and there's, like, robots that you use for different things to automate the system, so you mm -hmm. don't have to be literally fucking doing everything. You can be expanding more. and be a manager. Yeah, exactly. And so, I, essentially, and, and Ransom described it, but you're essentially making soup. You're yes. You're making soup for the, you're producing soup for the universe. Because well, aliens love, love the soup. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. But it's, it's like the only thing left over for mankind. And you're going, you're going from planet to planet. Like, That's sad and reassuring at the same time. Well, and you also have to pay attention to what planet you're on. There's mm -hmm. certain rules on some of them. Um, like, you build your own rockets to, to ship it, but there's, like, a planet that doesn't let you build your own fucking rockets. You have to build your, your office around these already planted what? rockets and so stuff. So is it, like, environmental? There's, like, yes. people, hey, no, yeah. you can't build rockets on our, but our you planet. Also, 
But then you also have to build up like weapons and stuff because That's you have awesome. the other the, the sh- other um, shareholders in on the planet trying to win. Well, fucking attack you and, so it's like and break all your espionage. shit. Yes. Oh, that's oh. I'm we're, we're talking about white collar crimes, right? guys. It's multiplayer, right? Yeah. yeah. After, after you get caught, oh, you no. go. After you get caught, this game. But you can, but you can make, you can work on factories together. Like you can oh, do a like co-op. Oh. See, they, they need, they <laughs> need to work on this. <laughs> if, if, like Stardew Valley. <laughs> yeah. they need to, speaking of which. But if they work on this, they need to tie this with the guys that make the escapist. That way you can go straight into pr- prison. The white and I also yeah, an fucking loved the escapist, but I'm so bad at it. But that game is another one. So that's great. You, you mentioned Stardew Valley, yeah. which you were like, <clears throat> I'm trying to come up with a nice name. You were, had a, I oh, got a freaking hard on for that game. Yes, yes. I still do because it came out today and that's all I've been fucking doing. Is, I got out of. So actually, describe it again for the okay. people listening. So. It's pretty much a mix of Terraria slash Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, and Rune Factory. Like it's if you just kind of put literally them together. built for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I so I downloaded it today on my lunch break, and I made the mistake of starting the game on my lunch break, oh. and I barely made it back to work, and then had to work like four more hours. The most most miserable four hours of my life. Stupid work. I <laughs> know. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't. I hope nobody from work is listening. Um, <laughs> no, and so I got home, and I literally played up until we record the show at 8 o'clock. I don't know if it's a little too meta for <laughs> the show, mm. but it's like 7... Fo- I, I look at my phone, and it's fucking 7.45, and I was like, I have to finish this day, and then I came. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, it's just the starting the farm, it's, and... It, like I said, it literally is your crack. Well, like, it's, it's, it's exactly everything that you, like... <laughs> Exactly. It's every game that I've ever that you've sat here and talked about for hours. Like, well, pretty and, the, much. and so I read a lot of reviews. When I downloaded the game, there were like four re- reviews on the game, and then two hours later, I was on my work computer looking at the Steam profile just to see what the other reviews looked like. There was like 150 reviews within oh, yeah. two hours of the game launching. It was like 150 positive and three negative, and the negative ones were people who played for an hour. <laughs> I tried my best to leave Where's as much negative, but yeah, yeah. No, and uh, one of the things I saw is that this apparently... This ain't Far Cry. <laughs> Call of Duty. It's, it's like, I can't find the sniper rifle. How do I yeah. win this game? Yeah. <laughs> no, but there's uh, somebody... One of the reviews I saw was like, there's pretty much endless ways to actually make money and play the game. It doesn't push you in any direction. You do whatever you... You do what you want with the world, essentially. And so they said that you could fucking have a farm... Or just forage forever, or raise like two hundred ducks. So I guess it's kind of just like you can do whatever. It's it's got a lot this more freedom than cool. than Harvest Moon does. It's kind of got you know how Animal Crossing is like very like you can do whatever you want. Right. They might be pissed off at you for neglecting them and not talking to them like your villagers, but they're not going to do anything drastic except move away. Except I guess. murder you, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it, commit it's, suicide. And so this game just seems like it has a lot of the freedoms of of Animal Crossing, and I mean just you do whatever the fuck you want, you know. Just, Sounds awesome. Just yeah. see this village was, just not going well. And, and it was made by one guy. Really? A one single dude? developer, Concerned Ape is his name. And I tweet at him all the time and he ignores me. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's, he's too like, busy uh, playing his own no, game. No, and he, apparently uh, he's been working on the game for a couple of years. I believe he announced the game like three years ago or something like that. So it's been a long project for him finally coming out. So I'm trying to, I'm, I can appreciate <clears throat> a single person's hard work on a game that I, so far oh, I yeah, really I am enjoying. So. Making a game by myself. <laughs> I totally can. It wouldn't be very good, but I I can totally imagine it. <laughs> so um, I've been playing a uh, quite a bit of Far Cry Primal. Uh, did some streaming from it. Um, I don't know. Have you? I know Ransom. You played some of the Far Cry series. Yeah, I love Far Cry series. Okay, it. so it essentially has the <clears throat> breakdown of. A typical Far Cry in a way of the map, how it's laid out, where there's certain areas you've you have got to climb things you, to unlock. <laughs> there, <laughs> there's not a lot of climbing so far. Thank God. Like I, I was like, oh, you've unlocked this. Portion it, it's of the it's map. the one you've platforming thing. Tower. But no, no. <laughs> instead, it's just going to these um, like pyres, these uh, bonfires, and you light them in a certain area, and you take out that area. that area becomes your area. Oh, okay. So, but it, it has that same, like, it still has that Far Cry, like, okay, you've got to beat these certain amount of people, you've got to save this certain amount of people in an area, and you've got to clear it out to move on to the next one. And as you 
help certain people out, they get added to your village, hmm. which gives you more resources. resources. And actually, you get daily drops oh, of cool. resources. And resource man management is actually <clears throat> a big deal, especially for crafting in the game. And it's so, you know, they had to be kind of different with the weapons because there's no guns. So there's stuff like a hive, like little hives you can carry around that have bees. And that you throw at people. Yeah, throw at it people. It sounds hilarious. Um, <laughs> like, essentially... It fucking suck, though, in real life. Let's be real. Wait, so it's like it, fucking bees. Okay, okay, okay. They're selling stuff from Animal Crossing because you can get stuff. Yeah, yeah you can do that. Nice. Well, yeah. yeah, there's actually... It is, is, this like, is this like Far Cry crossed with Animal Crossing? I, actually, there's a moment, there's a moment when you, when you first actually get real control over your character... You have that that Minecraft moment of when you play survival mode for the first time, like. of holy crap, I've got to get things together, find shelter, all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. um, like I've got to figure out how to do all this stuff really quickly. So is it like, I guess, is it your typical like Far Cry game, or is it like oh, it's, a lot different? It's typical as like there is a very thin skeleton, especially the way the map is laid out and that kind of stuff, and clearing out certain areas. Missions somewhat the same, but, but story wise, this... no way, to, no okay. way at all. But it's ten thousand BC, so Wait, I mean, okay, so you create, and it's villages. all in. Well, you you have a main village, like okay, your main your village. people, right. your people, and you're were pretty much decimated. Like, and you're trying to the little group that you were with was trying to find those people, mm -hmm. and so what you're trying to do now is. Find all of them that are being either pushed down in certain areas by another another tribe, yeah. and they're more like Cro Magnum like actually so you're like, like reclaiming your people. Yeah, but they're like one evolution below you, like that so group. You're like, you, like you can clearly see the slanted. Humanoids. Yeah, pretty much. It's like we're we're a little more Homo erectus. Speaking of which. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, no, 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 there, there's this moment, okay? So I'm fighting. It's an equal opportunity game. I'm, fight, I'm fighting when it's some of the women from the opposite tribe. Yeah. And and I killed them, and and they actually have a, their boob hanging out, like like you would, you know. They have, I guess, I don't know. I wasn't around. Like, uh, and I wasn't that old. But they, they sure. have they have a boob, <laughs> but they they have a boob hanging out, and I was like. Okay, it was disconcerting growing up, and basically, all I did was hit her with a club and killed her, and threw her on a rock, and then realized you could see full like muff, like hair. <gasps> oh, like man. it looked like its own forest, pretty much, oh, like wow. kind of thing. Man. And I was like, I wonder if guys are the same way. Like if, so, I mean, it was just one of those things. Like it's like when you're a kid and you can yeah. go, I, I wonder if I can see underneath, you know. You know, Peach's skirt and like Smash Brothers kind of thing. Oh come on, every guy's done it. So, uh, so I go and I grab a guy, throw him on the rock, and I was like, "Holy crap!" And I was like, like tapping on my wife. You can see the tip of his penis. You can see the tip oh of his penis. Can? You can. Yes. So they're going for realism, though. Yeah. So well, I mean, are and, they wearing like loincloths or what? Yeah, they are. They are, and like, like some of the women actually have like parts of their head shaved and tattoo. I mean. They're definitely a. Um, what time yeah, period does this? Ten thousand BC. Ten thousand BC. Okay. But the one of the coolest factors of the entire game is the fact that you can tame, lure, and tame animals as you progress. So you can actually have this whole list of animals, all the way from like an owl is the first one you start with, to a badger. And like if you remember Far Cry, badger was like a Be bitch. You don't, yeah, you don't. Fuck you you don't badger. fuck with badgers. Honey, so, badgers don't wasn't care. Wasn't there a movie called Ten Thousand VC also? Yeah, there was. So this is Ten Thousand VC the video game. Pretty much, <laughs> and and so, <laughs> so. Did Michael Sarah in that? Yeah, yes. <laughs> and so, so I, 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 uh, like I, I had, a, I got a tiger. And you can just basically... No, that was year one. That, that was year, year one. one. Oh. And, and, <laughs> and I had a tiger, and I was basically going... I, you basically point. It's kind of Assassin's <clears throat> Creed. And all of these Ubisoft games kind of seem to borrow a little bit from each other. And uh, you just point, basically, go, kill. And whatever animal that you have will basically just go, kill. As long as it's... How the fuck the, did they have... Did, how the fuck did they learn animal behavior? Right, like, let me just. Well, oh, oh, well, this guy, this, this, this guy, and this is what made me laugh is, is, 
he's actually the Beastmaster, which was actually a very terrible 80s movie as well. So, <laughs> But he's the Beastmaster, and he can basically control animals. Yes, it's hokey. Yes, yeah, it is whatever. Yeah, cool. I don't know. But, once, but it's once you're fun. carrying around beehives, throwing at people, yeah, like, my realism kind yeah, of... Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like whatever. <laughs> but I mean, but it's some, real enough to have, have dickheads. It, dickheads and it, it, it hits... It hits, wound parts. It hits that. It hits that thing of like... Yes, it's not, of course, realism, because, God, they'd probably all die anyway from some kind of weird dysentery from eating a plant they didn't realize was deadly or some shit. But, like, the moment you get it, like, on a mammoth, like, you can ride a mammoth. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, you yeah. can do that in the last game, right? Four, I think, or four, three, yeah. yeah. Four. But, you, but you get on the mammoth, and you have a spear that you've cre- that you've crafted, and you're just, you're just tossing it at these guys, and they, they basically do the whole, like... Ragdoll, like, wah, backwards. You just kind of feel like a... Do they get impaled? Yeah, they do. Oh, that's cool. And, 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 it, does, and like, it does let you have retrieval. So when you go up, you get to retrieve the, spear. the arrow or the spear or whatever. Huh. So what are your weapons looking like? Uh, uh, beehives and such. Beehives, uh, different kinds of spears. Now. All the spears, all the, the arrows, all that kind of stuff can be upgraded. All, everything seems to be upgraded. They've got um, slingshots. They've got hook shot type things. They've got just a whole bunch of Going stuff. straight Zelda. Yeah, it, it, it's not called a hook shot, but it essentially <laughs> is a hook shot. So, yeah. Any swords? Or any- uh, not yet so far. Um, your the the biggest thing was the the club. club. Like I just unlocked a two handed club. Oh cool. shit! And yeah, there's some shit going on with that. Like you it was him, I killed a bitches. lot of boob hanging out women with that one. Boob like out <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's it's really good. Gonna keep streaming a lot of it. Uh, I did play a little bit of Michonne with my daughter, who is like the biggest Telltale Game of Thrones. Uh, so I'll have the full review on that next week on Cinelinks, and we'll talk about it on the next episode. So, anything else? I know you played Ransom. You've been playing some of the pre-sequel. Oh, yeah, I've been playing some of the pre-sequel. Um, which is fun. Fun? So I started... It's it's funny, because actually, the reason I started was because my friend... One of my friends, Chaz, who lives up in... I can't remember right now. Okay. But it's in another state. And it's very important to this detail. <laughs> and <laughs> he, we have been playing the original Borderlands. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which I forgot how great that was. It I, is great. I actually like it a lot better than the second one. But that got made me go, hmm, I have a pre-sequel. Well, I should probably play that. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, I think I think Borderlands 1 or 2, I can't remember which one, just won games for gold for next month. It's going for next month. Huh. Oh, that's cool. So, um... So that's pretty much what's in our system. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. This week's Art Spotlight is Borneo with their single, Eating Animals. I felt it was appropriate for the whole Far Cry thing. So (laughs) you can find out more about this band on our show notes. Save a skin Not from the farmer 
with his wife who breathed the stock out in the sun at the village of the rainbow sea as we all go on we all go on we all go on to see It's the survival of the fittest And where the deer caught in the headlights In this disconnected age of life and white lines Will we see the bigger picture Or just leave them all behind la, 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 la. We are back. Uh, we're going to go into Talk Nerdy to Me. Talk Nerdy to Me. So, we're all Pokemon. I love the Pokemon. The Pokemon people over here. Y'all are fucking nerds. Yes, whatever. <laughs> Don't even. Shut up, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Pokemon Direct, which is the <clears throat> Nintendo Direct, but they were all cute and whatever, decided to call it the Pokemon Direct. For this for this month or year or whatever um, has come out and uh, what, what what we got from it is there is definitely two new well essentially one but whatever we don't know entirely yet but mm -hmm. there are two new Pokemon titles coming out sometime this holiday season Pokemon <coughs> Sun and Moon I bet it'll be like in November it, isn't that when they normally come out that's like generally my 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 whole thing is. Well, holiday season can be flipping much. It's but, like all of Q4. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> the entire but, four months at the end of the year. But since we don't entirely months. know when the NX is coming out, like... What is that Nintendo's... Next hush system, hush. yeah. Okay. So since we don't entirely know that, I don't know how they're going to stagger, like, what they're going to do, so... Did they say... I can't remember. Did they say what system it was going to come out on? They said... Well, they showed a 3DS. Okay. But since we don't know how the NX works, and since some of the stuff they showed, the artwork was very different. Like, it was very um, detailed compared to some of the stuff I've seen before. Like, we saw trucks. Um, even yeah, that was weird vehicles. Yeah. I've, I've even gone back and kind of look, looked at, at, at some freeze frames. And yeah, it's like Pokemon are actually in the vehicles. I'm like, hmm. What's going on? Yeah, Pokemon are driving vehicles. Yeah, Pokemon. Oh god, we're <laughs> screwed at that point. It's a Pokemon revolution. It's you Meowth. Know? Yeah. You know, Pokemon <laughs> are finally demanding rights. Yes. <laughs> they being incorporated in society. That it's all. It's that would be terrible. <laughs> the I, PETA of Pokemon. Yes, at that point. So, so it was. It was an interesting. Um, it was an interesting show of Pokemon. I mean, it's yeah. 20 years and they're all like... very nice. You tell they're very excited because, well, they're going to make a lot of money. Um, by the time you listen to this, the Pokemon not remakes... It's a virtual console launch the, of the originals. Of the originals, yeah, will be out. So you'll be able to download red, yellow, and a blue. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. All cool and stuff. But they're adding... Um, Chinese. Chinese, yeah. Yeah. I didn't check nice. to it, and but I like. I think the thing that I'm most excited for. <laughs> yes, we're getting new Pokemon, but the ability to transfer all of the, I guess Gen One Poke yeah. Pokemon to my newer 
games is kind of exciting. I mean, yeah, Pokemon compatibility is definitely exciting. It's a lot better than the cable. <laughs> <laughs> like I was describing to you guys, like the the one kid with the link cable. Transfer cable. Yeah. <laughs> well, the guy, the one guy with the link cable, is like your best friend or your friend that has a truck. Like everybody, like uses the hell out of that guy. Yeah. yeah so I'm kind of glad. Um, what do you guys think so far? What you saw of the um. Of the new uh, one? Yeah, the new one. With the... I mean, I guess they had to... I mean, I'm always kind of surprised when they name, when they give us the names of the new games because I'm like, I guess I wouldn't have thought of that, but I'm also not really surprised. Like, they gotta they got to find some juxtaposition yeah, to put, so... put in the name, so they're, so they've moved on from one. letters, right? Like, yeah. Or X and Y. X and Y. <laughs> What's yeah. going to be the next one after Sun and Moon? Well, they have to do the one, if they're going to do it like they always do, they have On some... and off. Yeah, on and off. <laughs> no, I was on and off. <laughs> I've seen a lot of jokes about the new one, that the, 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 the legendaries are Lunatone and Solrock. Yeah. Or those yeah. are the starters, and you can't catch any other Pokemon the whole game, or something oh, fucking ridiculous. God. Yeah, you can, only, you can only hunt at day or night. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that, yeah, oh God. I'm interested to see what the... What the what the fuck is gonna be the thing, right? Like X and Y was exerting yeah, like, built all like the, they were the the, cat, the gimmick. The... Yeah, I kind of hope they have, they have customization again. Yes, that's what I loved about X and Y. Made me made my day by day go great because I wanted to like see what what the fuck I could buy in the shops and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's the Animal Crossing in, in, in both of us actually. I just want to, are we able to give Pokemon hats yet? <laughs> Um, well, technically, not Pokemon in the contest, hat. like, to wear all the time. No, I want yeah. to, like, be able to accessorize my Pokemon when I throw him out. I can see what clothing he's wearing, and he's fighting on I, I do like That's that with Omega, with Omega Ruby and Sapphire, the, the Pikachu that you can... Oh, the, yeah, the cosplay Pikachu always has, has different <coughs> outfits you can get, it wears. Yeah, yeah. My, but... mine is the Luchador. Yeah. It, it's constantly I a Luchador. I like, give my, like, Pikachu, like, a sombrero or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you have? It's a my Pikachu has a sombrero. It's like a poncho and sombrero. Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> There's a shotgun underneath. <laughs> so, um, what do you guys? I mean, it's 20 years of Pokemon. What What's your memories? Your favorite? Your first? I tried explaining this to you, and you wouldn't let me. Oh, well, you, you were explaining it to me, but it made me feel old. And I, you know, I don't like feeling old. So, but go, go ahead, explain it. I very vividly, it's like the first very vivid memory I have of watching someone play a video game. I'm really from like elementary school in general. Uh, I was on the bus. <laughs> I was in second grade. <laughs> I think it was in second grade. I'm pretty sure it was in second grade. And I was sitting on the bus next to this girl I didn't really know. And she was fucking playing a Game Boy, which I'd never seen before. You're like, what is that? No, and then she was and she was playing Witchcraft. Pokemon. She was playing Pokemon. <laughs> she was playing Pokemon. I don't know which one she was yeah. playing, but I just very vividly remember watching her walk around in tall grass and then the battle music started and it was like and it had like that transition screen where it just like goes away and I was like, What the fuck is this? I need it. Yeah. And then you had the seizure and woke up and he was like, I have to have this. <laughs> Pretty much. And then so somehow I convinced my mom to buy me a yellow Game Boy and Pokemon Yellow. And that was my first. And I probably spent like two months trying to be Brock (laughs) as a second. You know, I wasn't very old. I was not even 10 years old when I was playing it. So for me, the concept of Pikachu is weak against Onyx was so fucking far above my head. But I was more than content to just like catch Pidgeys and Rattatas and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just and weedles and shit you Tata's know always sounds so tasty <laughs> <clears throat> one of my memories of of pokemon was like i played pokemon when i was so young that like i couldn't, uh, I couldn't read yet uh, i could not read yet when i was playing the first pokemon uh, so like i would have my brothers tell me what shit said so i could uh complete the game yeah i um through a long story I don't want to go through, but I ended up getting a copy of Red, a Japanese copy. And and back in the day, you go to uh, some different kind of, it wasn't wiki, but it was like like Game, game FAQs? Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much what it was. <laughs> you could go through and you could find translations and oh. trying to figure out like, because there's not a lot that you really have to translate through Pokemon. Like, it's like, I'm going to catch this thing. Like, but... 
some of the Japanese I learned actually was because of Pokemon. That's like, hilarious. yeah. So, um, but I remember playing the hell out of it and just waiting for it to come out over here. And or another thing was, and what Green was the, never did like it, what did, but later. What was the first like Pokemon game with a night cycle or a that day night yellow, cycle? That, that was. was um... Gold, silver, and crystal. Yeah, yeah, and I hated that as a kid because, like, I would always come home from school and it would always be nighttime. That's why so, I changed like, the I internal could... clock. Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> I was freaking 20-something already, so I was like, meh. I... <laughs> I remember, two. so when Crystal came out, I for some reason I've always loved the third. The like, third. the first, yeah. You're like, like, Yellow Crystal. Well, because uh, Yellow was the first one I had, so, the and special. I just, I know, and yeah. fucking Pikachu followed me around. You know, it was great. Yeah, yeah. And, and the then, cartoon was like hot, like hot and heavy at the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and then I remember I got Crystal and I was fucking excited because I could be a girl. I guess it never really dawned on me yeah. that I care. Like, I didn't care when that I was That was actually a big deal when that got announced. <laughs> and I and I didn't, I remember, I, I still really honestly don't care if I can't be a girl, but I just remember being excited. And she had blue hair and I thought that was cool as shit. And the cartridge was really pretty, you know? So I, I was super was excited like about it. Silvery, like shiny cartridge yeah. but then <clears throat> and then Sat, Ruby, Ruby and Sapphire came out and that was like I was old enough then to be excited about a new one like I knew mm-hmm. a new one was coming out and I knew it was going to be new Pokemon and I didn't know how to use the internet that well enough to like if there were leaks I didn't fucking know about it yeah. and so I remember we went to for some reason we were at like a Walmart and my mom bought it for me and I, I was still little enough I'm not even particularly big now but I was little enough to sit in the front part of the cart and my mom bought the game first, and we got <clears throat> got there. And I remember playing it on my Game Boy Advance and crying because I was so excited because I saw a Zigzagoon, and I didn't, and it was a new Pokemon You're I'd never like, seen before. What is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh my god, it's I a new Pokemon! I was so excited, I started crying at the fucking store. <laughs> and then I was really annoyed because Zigzagoon was everywhere, and I was like, okay, now I'm tired of now this. Now I'm bitch. tired of this. <laughs> what once made me cry? Well, yeah, I love, I love it when you. You find one, and you're just like, "This is amazing! I, I, I've never seen this." And then, well, then you hit it over and over again. You're like, you just keep finding the same damn fuck. one, and you're just like, "I'm gonna kill all of you now!" Like, there will only be one, and it's the one I have. And I just, it's just amazing to me because I guess Pokemon was the first video game I ever felt fanatical about right. in my life. I mean, yeah. And it, from a such, and from such a young age, it stuck with me. Um, and it's it still, I made. A comment at work today about the new ones being announced, and I sometimes I forget that I don't work in a place with people who play video games because they all kind of look at me like, what? "Are you fucking serious? Are you like twelve years old?" <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, "Well, I look twelve years them. old, so." No, I am not. I am thirteen. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it's just crazy to me that I can't even. I can't believe it's been out for twenty years. Well, we will definitely be following all of the news for Pokemon. Um, I'm sure at E3 they're going to show. A Sounds ton good. of it, and and X, because I doubt by E three anything will be out. Really, we gotta, we gotta get the leaks on what the starters may look yeah. like and all that shit. So, yeah. so we'll definitely be getting more into that as E three gets closer <clears throat> and as we go to E three. Um, Ubisoft, which we talked about, the division, uh, they've they've had a pretty good run lately. They they decided to not bring out Assassin's Creed this year, as well, because I'm thinking they're kind of. You know, taking it slow. Taking it slow and and, and re- restructuring a little bit. Hopefully. Well, Vinvindi uh, is this French conglomerate. They've bought a lot of stuff over the years. Um, uh, they, they recently went after, um, oh, I can't remember, Gameloft. Hmm. Uh, and they're, they basically go in and they start buying shares of the company and try to do a hostile takeover. Well, it looks like they're trying uh-huh. to do that right now. Yeah, and Yves Guimond, uh, the CEO, is basically begging people, like French people specifically, French and Canadian people, please buy stock, you know, take, do not let this happen. He's actually gone to the Prime Minister from <coughs> both countries and trying to keep it from happening. Um, please, we make really good video games. Yeah, we're, we're, actually, dicks. we're actually on a roll, and he's like, we really <laughs> want to stay an independent because they, they essentially are one of the biggest independent companies yeah. uh, for gaming and so they're trying really hard to maintain that I'm kind of hoping they do yeah. especially how the, how they're how they are right now um they just have such a good track record of, of putting out such a good variety of games they're they go through sprees 
where you're just like, what is wrong with you guys? And then all of a sudden, it'll be like this amazing spree of like great games. Like Assassin's was great. Because they need to learn. They have like one Child round. Yeah. They learn. Great. Well, I, th- I think a lot of it's <laughs> generational too. They, they tend yeah. to have around the same time, every generation, a an issue. Like, I guess it's just trying to get used to the, the new, new hardware, yeah. the new software, all that kind of stuff. So, um, Iron Fist, the next series. Actually, first, let's talk about, did you guys see the Daredevil trailers, any of them? Yes, That's, Elektra. Yeah, they've shown Elektra, they showed more Punisher. It's going to be out next <clears throat> month. Awesome. Really excited. So how uh, does Punisher look? Does he look like Gritty, or does he look like stupid comic book Punisher? Uh, Gritty. Okay, good. Um, it is a it is a Netflix show. They yeah, it is a Daredevil good. show too. So um, it's it's the Daredevil universe. I mean, the same universe that Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah Jessica Jones <laughs> and like probably the most sex I've ever seen in a Marvel anything. <clears throat> and uh, and Daredevil had some probably some of the most violence I've seen in a Marvel it's, thing. So I that dude think. hits the sign. Yeah. I was like, oh. When the, when the yeah. guy falls face first into a pick. Yeah. Uh, the like, car. I mean, and they do that in Jessica Jones, too, though, similarly. The car but. door with. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I actually, so I, I put off watching it because it's a, Austin does not like to binge watch TV shows. I love no, to binge I, watch. And I like love and hate because I'm like, I binge watch it and then I stop myself and I'm like, I'm going to watch it all and then I'll have nothing left. <laughs> well, so we st- we watched the first episode when it first came out mm-hmm. last year. Yeah, I remember. And we didn't keep watching it. And then literally this last weekend I was like, fuck it, I'm going to watch it. And I started it on Saturday and finished it on Sunday. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I love, because I love Jessica Jones, so I, I knew that I was going to like Daredevil. I like um, Jessica Jones more than I like I, I Really? Yeah. I think wow. I did too. Wow. I think I did too, but I... I you guys I, like Jessica Jones... You guys are very much in the minority on that one. Jessica Jones is like... It's psychological theory, thriller. It's yeah. not an action And movie. also, it's... I don't know. I just feel it's more consistently good because I feel that near the middle and end of Daredevil the of the first season, it gets really weak. Bide your time. No. <laughs> but uh, never my I just feel like Jessica Jones. It had a very, it had a, it had a build up, and then it just kind of exploded, I, and you couldn't, you didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. But I, I have, I've seen a huge consensus through, actually, our group as well, where they felt the first couple episodes of Jessica Jones were like really slow. So. Yeah. No, I thought That's what I'm saying it started no, but, slow uh, and then it builds up and then exploded. Because it's so good because at the end of the first episode. How the first episode, episode ends, ends yeah. blew my mind. That explains a lot. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> so really messed up. <laughs> so, so anyway, so <laughs> the third series, well, fourth because I think uh, Luke, Luke Cage, Cage will be out before. Yeah, they're but the, the last ones. series with that's going to be out that will be the last member of the Defenders series. I think it's going to be a miniseries or movie. They haven't quite initially completely decided, decided on that. On that. Uh, is Iron Fist, and they cast Finn Jones. He was uh, Sir Loras Tyrell from Game of Thrones. Is Mar- Marjorie's brother? Yeah. Okay, everyone goes, the gay brother. Yes, yes. He, he was the gay brother. So, um, that's the point of conflict around his character. Yes. So <laughs> that there, there, there is, there is, it's okay to mention that. <laughs> so yeah, there is, there's a little bit of a controversy as far as his ethnicity. Um, if you know the character, Daniel Rand, it, 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 it's fine. I mean, I understand where we want diversity in our comics. So, uh, take two publisher, you know, does, um, uh, Rock, uh, Take Two Publisher does Rock, Rock Star, and um, a bunch of other publishers actually. Uh, they're promising huge things at E three this year. Rock Star. So yeah, I'm thinking Red Dead. I think they're. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping, yeah. but they, I mean, there there were talks about the how they had been working on a sci fi game as well, like a sci fi right. game. I would. I would if. If a sci-fi game came out but by I, them, I would not be sad. Like, but I think, yeah, but I I think that, might, that might have one got a, might have gotten scrapped too. Oh, so that's sad. I think that's what I that's the context in which you I remember. More sci-fi it. game. Well, I mean, and they they represent Gearbox as well. So I mean, there's no telling. I mean, they've right. got Battleborn. It was a Battleborn. Yeah. And a few other things. And there could be more Grand Theft Auto, but I just 
just the I, I saw a release a while back and it was in the um, the Red Dead font from them, so I'm thinking it's, it's Red, probably Dead. Red Dead. It, it would make sense. It's been a, enough time. So the last thing on our list of <laughs> talk nerdy to me is Battlefield. Um, <clears throat> I'm a huge fan. Dice, they good, do good stuff. Usually do really good stuff. So we 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 can Wars, talk about. Star Wars. <laughs> I have a feeling. Me. I have a feeling EA had more to do with that well, than I mean, no doubt. than the I mean, dice. Yeah. So, um, but you know what? It still happened the way it happened. So you've got to blame whoever. But they might be making a World War One battlefield. Battlefield, which I think would be awesome. It, it, potentially. There, there's no. some li- the limitations are okay, awesome, t- but the li- but they're also not awesome know, at the like, same time. I trust Dice. I think yeah. they can do it. It, it would it would be kind of cool to. But I want them. I don't want it to just be like a World War One skin on Battlefield, which is what like Battlefront was. That yeah, was I think. Well, Star I know they I know they're working on, on a. I know they're working on a new engine. <clears throat> like they were mentioning it even last year, a new Frostbite engine. So there's no telling. So. We will probably find out more about that at E3 as well. So, um, you guys, anything else while we finish off Dark Knight Domain? Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk about Deadpool. It will be spoiler-like filled. So, just skip ahead to later on. Nah, just listen to it. Really, it's de- it's Deadpool. Really, I don't uh, think you really... You if you haven't about the seen it yet... <laughs> also, it's the plot of Deadpool. This is not exactly like Game of Thrones, okay? We pretty much know what's going to happen. So, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. And we're back. We're going to talk about Deadpool. Really, I, I wanted to talk about, you know... Uh, Zoolander 2, but you guys were like, I was talking about Deadpool, yeah. so no, no, Deadpool. Um, Katie, I know you're not really that big of a fan. You really hate I Deadpool. hate him. Absolutely. And yeah. she wears a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, there's only one person here not, other than my wife, who's standing by watching me this week. Um... <laughs> Ransom, you're not wearing a Deadpool wearing shirt. Deadpool shirt. The fuck or is it's wrong invisible. With you? Oh, it is. Oh, it's a cool Deadpool. Only under UV light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> that, that's terrible. So, um, Deadpool. So. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Pull of something. Um, so, Deadpool. Uh, what did you think, Katie? Um, I mean, you see Ryan Reynolds. So that's pretty much what Katie thought. <laughs> <laughs> Fight naked in a fire. Yeah. So I'm I, not going to complain. Okay. <laughs> no, um, one of the things I loved, right? Is that the box quote? <laughs> uh, I saw Ryan Reynolds fighting <laughs> in fire and naked. 10 out of 10 would watch it. Yeah, 10 out of 10 would watch Zoomed In, you know? like. <laughs> no, um, one of my favorite things, oddly enough, so, uh, what I saw, I watched a lot of Ryan Reynolds' interviews about Deadpool just to kind of get an idea of. He is Deadpool. I know, he, like, he really is. He's like, he's, you know, how Robert Downey Jr. like is, is Tony Stark. Tony Stark, Stark. yeah. Same thing. Um, but no, one of the most interesting things I listened to him talk about was the writing process for Deadpool. They've been writing the movie for, for, six, for six years, I believe. Oh, um, mm. they've, been, they, they've been working on the script. I mean, Ryan Reynolds it was like, there's a 90% chance that I didn't leak the footage. I mean, he did it very deliberately to make yeah. him make this movie. Um, but the, one of the things that he talks about in, in the writing process is that they had to work very hard to write Wade Wilson as three people. Um, and, and really yeah. and really incorporate it well into the movie, which is one of my favorite things that they did, is the storyboarding for the movie was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, the, but they had to write Wade Wilson before the mutation, Wade Wilson, Wade Wilson during his torture, and then Wade Wilson as Deadpool. I mean, and they're all very similar, very, very well, you know, well But they're done. different. They're definitely they're, different. They've got different, the nuances are different, you know, and that's kind of, I can really appreciate great writing, and I think that they did a great job with that. Well, and the fact that it was, it was... It was a bunch of dick and fart jokes, but actually had some meaning. Like, there was yeah. actually yeah. some thought to it. <clears throat> and they were very well-placed dick and fart jokes, but <laughs> it, quite literally, they were well... But in, in, in overall, I mean, the action was really good. Yeah. Uh, Colossus was amazing. Crack me up. Although, that is my only complaint. Like, it was a really well-written movie, but uh-huh. I feel like the 
side characters were like horribly written. except for narcissistic teenage warhead she was i liked her character a lot like i didn't think she was i didn't she had like three lines i don't i she think just, they were but i think her she was supposed to be silent and broody but she she i think she i guess it just seemed like it was like oh we spent all of our time with deadpool well, and she's we supposed lie. to be the antithesis i think kind of of colossus like i feel like she's, yeah. she's kind of the if we're going to talk about like moral compasses also like, i she's hated colossus's character i, <laughs> I loved his annoying. character yeah. no 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 i loved I his character the russian like big dude like I oh i know but so he it was it was it was it was he he was the boy <clears throat> scout like he you needed him he was like his yeah, little angel they, on his like, shoulder. Make him a little less stereotypical. No, and that was the point. And and I think that really was the point with his character is that he had to be that stereotypical. Like I'm a hero. But I don't think he had to be that. I don't think he like had to be that. I think to to to, to do the polar opposite of what Deadpool was like. You, oh you, no, you, it's you, fine. You, like how he is. Like if he's a goodie, like like I'm a soldier i'm good he's actually a lot like that in the comics yeah. though too so it's kind of like no i like i like that but like i don't know i just think we didn't gel with you and that's fine it's wrong but it, it's <laughs> totally fine i did my one one of my favorite lines was when he walked he's at the xavier school and he knocks on the door oh yeah and then he's like <laughs> he said man this this school sure is big but you're all y'all are the only two x-men i ever see it's almost like the studio couldn't afford to give us any other characters put in the movie yeah, yeah like it's... that fourth wall breaking i think was really well done um, <laughs> no i think yeah yeah it's like and they mentioned even blowing up the school like yeah. it's, like it hasn't this thing blown up like three or four times <laughs> yeah it makes fun of ryan reynolds and shit oh god know, the like... beginning the intro is oh, probably the intro with all the like <laughs> the names of the, the people working on the but it's not their names it's, it's like the like descriptors the yeah <laughs> produced by some prankers so, like, the yeah. ass hat yeah. yeah the writers the real heroes yeah. like that that was great um which that all that that the whole scene was that scene that was leaked mm-hmm. was the car yeah. scene. Um, overall, I mean, his performance was really good. The fact that they got away with a very rated R movie. Talk about getting pegged, you know, like. The, but <laughs> yeah. the reper, the repercussions though from that movie doing so well, you're starting to see them in other uh, comic book stuff right now. Like they announced the other day that. The direct the uh, director's edition of Batman vs Superman is going to be rated R. They're like, oh yeah, look at what we okay. can do now. Yeah, and, you know, Batman vs Superman is still a shitty movie. Yeah, pr- well, it could be, but we don't know yet. So I'm, it's not <laughs> we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But overall, like Deadpool itself, I, I really enjoyed. I I don't really have a lot of complaints. I'm I'm not ransom. And hey, I, like, I love that movie. Can we that talk about great. the complaints that I saw yeah, actually. after the movie? Well, okay, was what? on, okay, Tumblr of all places, of course. Oh, God, it's well, Tumblr. No, but my favorite thing was, is the immediate, like, uh, like knee-jerk reaction was that there were, there's... It, there's too many. There's no trigger warnings, obviously, but at that they make they make fun of rape and whatever and abuse. But what what came to people came to like what got popular it, like uh, after people were reblogging and making this really popular that it was such a shitty like shitlords like Deadpool, you know, like they're yeah. just mis- mis- misogynistic and blah blah blah. But it, what people don't realize and what what Tumblr made popular was that. Wade Wilson and Vanessa in that particular scene where they're where they're kind of trading like who had it worse, right? Like, right. well, my uncle and his friends like molested me or whatever. It's like it can that a lot. All of that is canon for Deadpool. Like yeah. he is like he had a really fucked up childhood. Yeah, he was very severely abused, but humor is is the way that he dealt he with it. Helps with it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so or how both of them. So think. that my favorite thing was is, is people like tried to get all up in arms about all these things, but can uh, cannot can, what, canonically it's like. It's in he, there. It's exactly. Like, it's like he's not, he's making fun of it to cope, not to yeah, like fucking make a joke. Yeah, that is his character. Like, yeah. that yeah. shit happened to him. <laughs> Which I don't think a lot of people realize, but I well, it's I, like, I you have a lot of people who are like, what's Deadpool? And they go watch the movie instead of like the people who read the comics and watch them. And, and it's fine. And, and to, to me, the, the stories don't necessarily have to, like, it's not, it's not the public's job to introduce that character to them, yeah. it's the studio's job to inter- introduce them. But to but, a certain, like to a certain point. But the whole like... trigger word thing, like, drives me nuts anyway. <laughs> so I, I just, I, 
Yeah, that's about all I can say. <laughs> or was, I'm going to start saying my own trick words. <laughs> I just was, I wasn't surprised to see that type of reaction. Oh, like, no, there's trick. always going to be that. But then, like, but then of course, anything. now it's like, oh, well, he's also the first pansexual. Like, it's confirmed that he's quote unquote pansexual, right? Like, that's his sexuality. He pretty much will fuck anything that moves. He makes that pretty obvious in the movie. Yeah. What is he has, like, a fucking stuffed unicorn and he's, like, jacking off. You know, he's like, yeah. oh, sorry, we weren't supposed to move up that far. You weren't supposed to see that. You know, like, yeah. shit like that's funny, but. I think a lot of people don't realize kind of how groundbreaking the movie is, oh, especially yeah. for a character like Deadpool. And he, I think that they did a fucking. He, he is job. a very, very sick, sad individual yeah. that got powers. Basically, yeah. is what it is. And there is elements of a good guy, but he kind of does what he wants, he to, wants do. to do. He's Plus, a hero. Yeah, yeah. To but he was a vagrant before he was before he was Deadpool. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, so it's like, how do you expect someone to change? But, I mean, you do see him, like, struggle with some, like, with some, I mean, there's a reason he does listen to Colossus a little bit, you know? There was, there was some stuff, well, I mean, you know, in in character-wise, he's eventually going to be, there's the whole X-Force thing. I'm hoping they do. That's, that's what he, that's what he wants, that's what he said in tons of interviews, pretty much anything. Well, you, you, you heard that he actually took the costume. Yeah, he yeah. stole it. He said, I've been waiting 11 fucking years for this movie. I And so he, after he's finished shooting... He, <laughs> he stole the costume. He just took that's it. That's amazing. And, but but the, the PR department is like, okay, it's fine. Because it's pretty much... He he goes to McDonald's in like his freaking Deadpool costume. Like, that's amazing. And acts like Deadpool. Yeah. Because he's Deadpool. fucking amazing. And they, they even... There's this huge thing where they're trying to get Deadpool to host, host SNL. Oh, and he responded Oh, yeah, though. yeah, yeah. No, that, th- that was a fake response. Oh, really? That was supposed to be like Kanye. Like, there was a... Kanye had... There was a, there was an audio that was released. Oh. And, and he was... He was, he was Yeah, Kanye. as Kanye, but as Deadpool. Oh, so, my gosh. So, there is a... He doesn't very, even... There is a there is a Except, chance. Like okay, there's a difference between Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Ryan Reynolds because like Robert Downey Jr. isn't as into Iron Man as Ryan Reynolds. This is, is. this is there there is a good analogy between the two actors though, and I think it's Last Chance. It, it was Ryan Reynolds like been trying. He's been trying to do be a big movie star for a long time. Like pretty much almost everything he's been in recently. I don't. But, has I thought he, like, I don't know. I don't think it was like his last chance. Oh, maybe. Well, okay. If like... you if you if you take a look, if you take a look, like he did, uh, R.I.P.D. Yeah, it failed. Green the Green Lantern, Lantern <laughs> it failed. Like you go down the list, like he's not a bad actor. I've never thought of him as a bad actor. No, I know. He gets but in the shit. Like... Blade Three failed. Like, like but pretty I'm much. He like the peak of, he failed. <laughs> like, yeah. He like hit the peak of his career. Well, he was sexiest ago. man alive, like, yeah, like then, 10 years ago. So, exactly. but I mean, what I'm saying is, like, he knows that this is probably his last big, I've got to get this well, shit done. And I don't think he so. Is. He's he's super young still. Like, But I'm talking like, well, yeah, but there's many super young where has been too. Was, yeah. So I think this is his more, I, this is my only chance to do this. I've been wanting to do this. And this is my shot to actually have a big movie and yeah. it do well. And Robert Downey Jr., it was literally, okay, I've got to do this. Like, he was kind of in a comeback, but... Be, he, oh, no, Iron he, Man definitely put him on the map. Yeah, right? because he he basically, he broke, he burned and then pissed on and then crapped on many, many, many bridges in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Like, nobody, because of all the drugs and all the, like, waking up in people's yeah. houses... Like, we, he woke up in someone's, some kid's bedroom. Like, he was bad. People forget, like, how bad Robert Downey Jr. was at one point. And yeah. he was such a talented yeah, guy. Like, super. Like, I, I saw an interview with him a while back. Like, <clears throat> he barely even remembers doing Chaplin. Like, that's how that's like bad. Stephen King writing Cujo, though, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> he, doesn't remember, so, he doesn't remember writing it, you know? So, but. But I think there's a certain analogy of, like, when, when, when Iron Man first came out, like, he went around, Robert Downey was like, I, I am freaking Iron Man. Like, yeah. as soon as he said that in the movie, literally in the real world, he pretty much was Tony Stark from that point on. Yeah. And I think it's but kind I of... Don't, I don't think... I think Robert Downey Jr. views Iron Man is like, oh, yeah, that's a job and that gets me a lot of money. 
and people respect me really well for that. But Ryan Reynolds is like actually like I love Deadpool, you know? Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I think... like you would never see. Robert Downey Jr. dress up as Iron Man. Actually, have he, like, has, he, he has, has? Yeah, oh, he has. Yeah, he has died. So, and it, you, but you even see with some of the other Marvel characters, like um, I always forget his name, but the guy who played uh, Captain America, Chris Evans. Chris, Chris Evans, like how could you forget a face like that? Well, okay, the different mindset, but anyway, <laughs> so like I saw where he um, was starting to do all the charity stuff. Like, for a while there, he was, like, completely, like, I don't know if I'm going to do any more Captain America's. I'm not, like, when my contract comes up. Like, he was really kind of, like, you could see kind of backing into the shadows. Like, I'm not doing this. And now he's, like, embraced it. Yeah. Partially because I think he knows he's going to be typecast for a very, very long mm-hmm. time. But it's good to see when these, these, these actors, like, Acknowledge that they're now part of that mythos. Yeah, that universe. That universe. So, and there was a lot of like, <laughs> I don't know how the hell they got away with it with Deadpool moments, as far yeah. as like the Marvel Cinematic, the Disney Marvel Cin- Cinematic Universe, and the Fox stuff. You know, because they're separate. Oh yeah, and you're like, telling me about the. the but you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, the last fight battle, the the battle that was a helicarrier. I know, but like, that's 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 Shield. I know, but they never like since they never like. But he says in the, in the post credit scene, he said you'll probably expect Nick Fury or, or Samuel L. Jackson. Like, yeah. So, I mean, he has a nod towards Yeah, the, they, the Marvel yeah there's universe. definitely a nod towards but I don't think it's infringement. Like, well, it, no, no, it's... It, okay. But you're seeing, you're seeing cross... You're seeing cross... What, you, you're seeing Sony and Marvel making peace enough to bring Spider-Man in? It, Fox is not going to do it, though. They're, 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 especially now, if... It's if, such if, a fucking cash. They benefit so much from if, sharing rights. But the problem is, if Deadpool had been a failure... I guarantee you, we probably would see sharing. Now that they're not, the, yeah, the bad no, blood. Deadpool is, they, but they, I don't think, I don't think Fox is going to successfully pull it off. I don't think they're going to pull off what Marvel was able to pull off. I, I, <laughs> they, they want to, they want to, especially with because, the like, X Men universe. That's but what they're their, their movies about. aren't consistently good enough. Mm-mm. Like Deadpool was like their only movie that I loved. Like otherwise, I like they're X. Like, I don't... I, the last two I was X-Men, really over X-Men after the first two. The, I, I like the first <clears> two, <throat> um, and I like the last two. I think everyone hates three. And then don't... So. They, they, they ignored three. Yeah, well, they, they, no, they, like... they, they J.J. Abrams three at the, <laughs> at the last movie. They basically said, okay, it never existed. Yeah, but, yeah. they just pretended so, like it didn't happen. So it really bad. Yeah, it was a terrible <laughs> movie. But and if you know like, the history, if you know the history of that movie, it is just... It, like three different directors. Was it's surprising Four it came Fox? out. <laughs> yeah. And, and then Fantastic yeah. Four Fox. Yeah, Fantastic yeah. Four was also Fox. And yeah. like, oh my lord! Like, I would rather watch the original Fantastic Four movies than the new one. Oh no no no! <laughs> I would almost rather watch the unreleased <laughs> one that I have a copy of that is oh, terrible. That's yeah, amazing. we'll have to watch it one day. Oh man! The, oh, the bad guy god. is Mole Man, and then Doom. Oh my! Yeah, god. it's it's terrible. So so that that's our wrap up. Um, I'm pretty sure Deadpool will come back out again in our topics at some point. So uh, we're gonna take a quick break and come back to WTF, and we'll be right back. WTF. try again. And we are back. Wow, that's like a bang. sheep. I don't know where the hell that came from. <laughs> back. <laughs> this is the wrong episode for that. So, <clears throat> so in WTF, we're, 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 we're going to go the uh, fast food route on this one. Because fast food is kind of WTF. It, fast food is WTF. Speaking of which, I got to bring it up because I said I was going to bring it up. I had the uh, Burger King just started selling hot dogs today. What? Yes. And I'm I was afraid. like, well, I was like, okay, yeah, flame broiled right. hot dog doesn't sound too bad. Like, I can see people having issues with the burgers. I don't mind the burgers at Burger King, but I was like, I'll try, it. I'll try one, well, two. And so I tried the chili dogs, and then I started like, I was eating them, and my wife was kind of like, like, I, do you like them? And I'm like, I don't know, like, because I was, I was <laughs> legitimately first. trying to figure out like, like the flavor, and I was trying to taste. The flame broil, and I didn't taste it. And then I noticed there was beans in the chili, and I don't mind beans in the chili, but I mind beans in my chili that go on my chili dog. Yeah. Like it doesn't go right. It's too much. But it did have onion. 
which I do like. So, so um, it kind of tasted like, I don't know if you, if you guys are listening, it kind of tasted like a wiener schnitzel hot dog. I've never had any wiener schnitzel. Uh, we might... We might fix that someday, cause, okay. but it's... I'm not a hot dog man, though. Okay, well, <sighs> we're so immature, because my, my thoughts went elsewhere. <laughs> but anyway, it, it went back to Far Cry. So, <laughs> so, but anyway, I had to bring that up. It's interesting, and I'm curious to see what they're going to put chili on now, because they have it. So what the hell? I mean, they can't just sell it just for the chili dogs. Like, they're going to have to start putting it on everything. At some point, yeah. Chili burger. Yeah. So have you had Sonic's the the Coney? Yeah. Austin likes Sonic. How did compared? I think Sonic the Howard Chili's did. actually slightly better at Burger King, hmm. like just as far as quality goes. Oh, it's a new product, they have. Yeah, it's kind of thing. <laughs> they the, care I mean, right the bun, now. <laughs> the, yeah. the bun was Wait, decent. <laughs> I just, I was like, I was expecting like, like I don't know. I was thinking like, oh, when I barbecued crap on the not actual crap, but when I barbecued stuff. You know, outside, I was like a hot dog or something. I was yeah. expecting like that kind of flavor, and oh, I didn't really they taste have gas that. Grills. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, but I was expecting something a little more. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so let's get into WTF because I don't want to talk about hot dogs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off with yours first. Mine? Yeah, let's start off with yours. <clears throat> okay, so this is about a man, an adult, is like it a, hot dog a, man? a fucking illegal. No, adult. the opposite. No. Uh, the opposite. I don't. Well, he. So he's got <laughs> really fucking drunk, hot right? Dog, hot dog woman, I guess. But <laughs> then, you know. no. So this British guy decided to or hamburger woman <laughs> legally change his name to Bacon Double Cheeseburger as a show of his undying love of the sandwich. God, why couldn't he but, be a doctor? Dr. Cheeseburger. Dr. DB double. Cheeseburger. Oh yes. my god, that'd be great. But no. So apparently, he was fucked up. With his friends. Okay. And As they, one is. That's, that's, that's stupid. This quote, it was the culmination of probably too many drinks in the pub where there was a conversation about names. And after he sobered up, he still embraced his new identity. And I just want to say, Fox News, you don't really give me a whole lot of the in-between. Like, did he change his name drunk? Can you just change your name while you're fucked up in well, Britain? He, like, I was about to say, it is the UK because you see a pub. Well... Probably the UK. Yeah. So maybe their laws are quicker. Maybe there's an app. I don't know. <laughs> there's uh, an app. Change your name. UK listeners out there. Do you... Three times per year. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> Xbox Live. <laughs> you can change your name. Unless but it's... Sony, you never can. This so is, this It's ten ninety nine if you want to do it for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this guy literally and legitimately changed his name legally to... Bacon double cheeseburger. He should become a rapper. And he says he's not changing it back. He's, he said he's just going to embrace it being his fucking name. And apparently his fiance is not that pleased. I would, I would <laughs> understand why. Be Mrs. Also, I really want to see like, a picture of this. But there's dude. so many other like burgers that you could like, like or fast food items that you can name yourself that would sound much cooler. Like Big Mac. Big Mac. Like Big Mac, that that, but you have to be tiny. Be you have to be small guy. <laughs> like the, the, there has to be Are that McNugget. Yeah, McNugget. <laughs> McNugget. Doctor oh. McNugget. Thank you very much. I'm oh. Scottish. I just would be. One, I would want to be Miss, <laughs> Mrs. Hamburglar. Yes. Like can we go with can we go with like Canon McDonald's character <laughs> names? I have. I'm waiting like for the fucking Mrs. Grimace. <laughs> God, there's so many of those characters. Yeah. Anyway, so speaking of that's pretty that's pretty WTF. I'll give you that. But speaking of Big Macs, uh, there was a man, <laughs> loose term, hey, the, 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 mug, well, the mug shot, <laughs> no. the guy actually looks like he's straight out of Far Cry. I, I shit I'm you not. 10,000 BC? Yeah, like, like <laughs> dented head. Like, there's definitely some stuff. Um, he stole a, he stole, he kidnapped, let's, 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 let's listen to this, a three-month-old baby. Oh, my gosh. And decided to go to McDonald's and trade said baby for 15 Big Macs. It's a fucking barter, right? Like, he's barter. Yeah, it's barter like, system. it's sort of like far, uh, 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 Fallout. Back. It's yeah. like Fallout. It's like, like how much, this baby. I've got a so spool. Well, on him, he had like 20 bottles of Benadryl as well and some other stuff. So it almost might have been like a Fallout moment. Like, <laughs> he just drops it down. How much can I get for this? And it's just I like, I get, Big Macs. Here's 15 <laughs> Big Macs. So the conversion rate on that, somebody needs to figure out. It's speaking of an app. <laughs> Shit, I need to like, get my manager for this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <laughs> authorize it. <laughs> no, I, so. I'm convinced it's, the conversion rate is that one Big Mac 
per one baby pound, you know, like maybe the baby, I'm, I'm assuming the baby was well, three about months old, so the baby should be more than 15 pounds. I'm like, no, that'd be about right. The, I got the, the, I got, I got the mother the, is in the room. I got the nod from, from, I got the no from the wife. I don't know, by three months, I wasn't paying attention anymore. So, it's, <laughs> but I mean, that's just, and so that was in Little Rock, um, Arkansas. Arkansas, so. Not a huge shock. Is that going to be like on the menu? Are they going to add like a baby, <laughs> baby pricing? Baby like, pricing. well, they have they have the calorie count. No, they have to weigh they, them out. Like they bring yeah. out a scale and they the baby, and they're like, oh, I can give you like uh, two and a half Big Macs. For yeah. Well, that, I actually, they have they have the two for five dollar menu on right now for Big Macs, <gasps> and so like. When they when I first got the WTF, because people will send me WTFs on my Facebook page now, and so some really weird shit will pop up, and people are like, why are you people sending you stuff about dildos? Like you're just in the market <laughs> for a new one. Yeah, I mean, come on now. But so, so I actually was sitting there trying to figure. I think it was like thirty five fifty or something like that using the conversion. It's like there was some conversion that that I had if we went with the five dollar pricing structure with oh. tax and everything so so i guess the street price for a baby's like 35 to 40 bucks so that's good to know that's uh, good. Yeah. for uk listeners out there that are changing their names on their apps i don't know what the uk price for a baby would be <laughs> but in our last wtf speaking of fast food and of our favorite state for wtf florida florida, florida. Um, authorities in Florida have arrested a man accused of throwing a live alligator through a restaurant drive through window. Of course. Keep it classy. Yes. Florida. And, and Order system. No, I think, I have a feeling that the alligator, crocodile, alligator. Alligator. He's <laughs> like. Alligator, he like, he let this guy know. He was, he really wanted a frosty so he could dip his french fries in it. <laughs> yeah. He said, homeboy, can you please hook me up? And so the guy's like, the best I can do is a drive by. And just throws them through the window. <laughs> that was like the shittiest drive by the other way. <laughs> Only in Florida. It's like everywhere else, oh, we'll fucking shoot people. But <laughs> I don't have a gun, so I'm gonna throw this alligator at you. <laughs> so Did they say how big it was? It was three it was three and a half foot reptile. So like said, what so. kind of like like By the way, that was Jupiter, Florida. So I mean how how hard do you have to throw it for it to go? Or how fast was he? Well, yeah, like what is the? It, was, I it, prob- it, it probably weighed slightly. It probably weighed about the same amount as the baby. The, so, it, huh? Did did it survive? Yes, the alligator did survive. Okay, God, can you? The add, guy did too, unfortunately. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be seven, alligator. Guys, just like it's gonna be seven fifty for your. Because uh, Wendy's is so expensive, so it's like seven fifty what for a frosty, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, "I need to take your money," and he's like, "I don't have any fucking money." Takes uh, it. Alligator. <laughs> There's a drive what if he was just window. trying to barter? Well, what if he was just like, "I have this alligator." So, so, so I know it's probably worth a good amount. So <laughs> apparently, the driver wearing it, they like to specify this in, in the in the article wearing a baseball hat backwards, arrived at the drive through window <laughs> to receive. Ever. Yeah, I know. To re- receive a large drink just before one thirty a.m. So we are. See with a large drink. Yeah. <laughs> While the tenant had had her back turned to the window, he he threw. The I would be so afraid to <laughs> anything would have touch me on my back. Yeah, I know. So. Like alligator bark, like on your back. It's like, don't sneak up on me like that. Sorry, I have bad reactions because you know an alligator was thrown at Almost me. Almost fucking like, ate me. So. <laughs> That is amazing. Thank you, Florida. The gift that keeps on giving for our WTF. Well, that's our WTF, and that's our episode. Um, you can check out more of our show on Cinelinks.com, on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, um, apparently alligators as well being tossed through windows. You can, If you catch one, you can listen to our show as well. Um, you also can catch SCNS Live on their YouTube page and on Cinelinks. Um, we're doing tons of streaming now. We're going to be doing tons of streaming on the Cinelinks YouTube for The Division. And uh, my daughter and I are doing streaming chapter by chapter of Michonne. And it's so funny to listen to her because she wouldn't talk for the longest. And then she's getting all like, like uber critic <laughs> on stuff. Because she's played every one of the Walking Dead games. Oh, wow. Like three or four times. Oh, my so she's like, I don't like this mechanic. I don't like this. I was like, damn. Like, she's, like, she's tearing her she's apart. She's your daughter. Yes, yeah, she is my daughter. So, 
So yeah, you can. That proves it. <laughs> yeah, that proves it. Also, shout out to Clockwork for. Uh... Yes, thank you, Clockwork. Forgot to mention you guys for hosting us. Um, every Friday. Every Friday at eight o'clock, we're here. We uh, we, we might might like having a few people show up if you want to and watch us sometime. We had one person watch today. She's a cap- <laughs> she's a captive audience. Hey, Tara. Hey. That's my wife. So, um, not, and by the way. She is the talk nerdy to me voice. So every time you hear that that, that sexy was a secret. Yes. <laughs> Not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah. So also make sure to check out our other show that we have. It's the Father Gamer Interviews. We have two up right now. We have one with Tom Beardsmore from Code Sync and jo- Joseph Hughes, an indie developer. That one was really interesting. Code Sync one went, Code Sync one was awesome. But the uh, any the dev one was kind of cool because he just got a game from uh, being greenlit to actually on Steam. Oh wow! And that whole process of getting that done was kind of interesting to talk to. So anyway, thank you guys for listening. Again, check all of our stuff on Cinelinks.com. And you guys want to sign off with your? Oh yes, you can find me on Twitter at the Squeaky Duck, and then on Instagram is Katie Cakes with Cakes. And you can find me at, at yeah, I can't remember. I've changed it like three times. Yeah, I know. So I'll find you. <laughs> I'll put you in the show notes. will be something. I'm yes. probably going to change it again. So, so and you, of course, everything Father Gamer, at Father Gamer, at yeah, everything, pretty much. So, thank you guys for listening. And as always, achieve greatness. What the heck, dude? You said it looked like you were about to say something. It's, you know, I'm always sabotaging. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you, have and, and, and you did. Achieve greatness. Achieve mediocrity. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks, guys.